Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I want to talk about a story found in 2 Kings chapter 5 of a little maid that was taken away from her homeland, but she let her light shine for God even in the midst of very dark circumstances. The Bible tells us that the Syrian army had invaded Israel and carried away people captive and other people had been killed. Among those that were taken captive was a little maid. She was taken suddenly from her mother and home and she hadn't even time to say goodbye to the ones that she loved. But whenever she was taken into captivity, it was into a land where people bowed down before idols and did not worship the God of heaven. We find her placement. You know, it's interesting to know, and I don't believe it was by chance, she was placed in a certain home. It was Naaman's home. He was the captain of the army. He was a great man in Syria. And she became the maid to Naaman's wife. Now, this little girl didn't sit down and say, well, I, I, I'm going to be bitter. I'm going to blame God for what has happened to me. No, my friends. Rather than that, she decided that she would let her light for God shine in this heathen land and let them know that she really, really trusted the Lord. Sad to say that many young people, when they go away from home, perhaps to university or to work, they turn their back on God and forget their upbringing and the godly influences in their lives. And then there's a problem. One day she saw her mistress very, very sad. She seemed burdened. It was written across her face. Finally, the message came to the little girl that Naaman, her master, was a leper. She knew what that meant, and so did Naaman's wife, because if this leprosy progressed, Naaman would be cast out of the house and shut away from the family and even lose his position. But the little girl immediately thought about God and God's man that could could help him. And so we see her proclamation. Rather than keep silent, she didn't sit away and say, well, I'm not going to say anything. But in the midst of her adverse circumstances, she was going to be a witness for God. And she told him about the man of God. Well, the news came to the king of Syria. He decided to write a letter to the king of Israel. He would send him gold and silver and garments. And the king of Israel would heal him. The little girl never mentioned the king of Israel. It was the God of Israel and the man of God. Well, whenever the letter came to the king of Israel, he was angry. In actual fact, he rent his clothes. He thought that the king of Syria was trying to pick a row and argument with him. But you know, Elisha said, let him come to me. And we find God, you know, people have got this idea that they've got to go to some person in particular if they're going to get rid of their sin. The only one you need to go to is Jesus, friend. Some people think that they have to pay. It's without money and it's without price. And so we see the procession. Finally, Naaman and his entourage, they make it to the house of Elisha. Now, Naaman decides, this is how it's going to happen. Elisha the prophet is going to come out to me. I'm an important person. He's going to lay his hand upon me. He's going to pray over me and I'm going to be healed. But it wasn't that way. But Naaman thought, the man of God sent a message, go wash in Jordan seven times and thou shalt be clean. It's a very simple message. So is the plan of salvation, friend. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It was a solitary message. Yes, it was. There was no other way of healing outside of this. Neither is there salvation outside of Jesus Christ. But you know, Naaman had a perception when he heard about washing in the muddy waters of Jordan, he was angry. In actual fact, he was about to get into his chariot. Who does this man think he is? Does he not know who I am? He's about to go away. And his servant begged him, oh, Master, don't go away. Don't leave in leprosy and, uh, and die. And so finally, he got away from his pride and his arrogance. And he finally went down into the mud, muddy waters of Jordan. Seven times, and the Bible says, on the seventh time, his flesh came again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Isn't that wonderful? Clean. Friend, now are ye clean through the blood. If you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll cleanse your heart.
whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But I want you to notice finally the peace. Naaman, having cast aside his arrogance and obeyed the word of God, he finally comes back to the prophet. And you know what he acknowledges? There is no God in all the earth but the God of Israel. The little girl's never mentioned again, but God is given all the glory. She let her light shine when it counted. And then Elisha the prophet said to, to Naaman, go in peace. And he went home with peace in his heart, cleansing in his body. Heavenly Father, may precious souls come to Jesus today and know thy peace and thy cleansing through the blood in Jesus' name. Amen. From my heart to yours and home to yours, God bless you.